Log in with Google. Log in with Apple. How many times have you seen that button? It should be easy to get social login working with your app because these things are everywhere. However, it's not as easy as you would think. There are plenty of little details that you could miss along the way. In this tutorial, we'll generate a Next.js app from scratch and configure both login with Google and login with Apple. In case you're curious, the only reason I know how to do this is because I'm building an app called Boom Languages, which you can check out at boomlanguages.com. Let's get into how to do this. So let's get started by generating the next JS project. To do that, we'll type npx create next app at latest page key auth example. Page key auth example is the project name we'll use throughout this demonstration. So it's going to ask a bunch of setup questions. You can keep all of the default answers except for one. The important one is app router. It's brand new. It's a new feature. Just say no to it because NextAuth does not really seem to support it yet. All of the documentation does not mention it. It talks about the old way of doing things. So we'll stick to that for this example. Once that completes, you can CD into that project directory and do npm run dev. And then if you open up localhost colon 3000, you get a brand new Next.js app. Creating the buttons, let's start out by making some very basic buttons that we can use as our login buttons. So the first thing I'll do is go into globals.css and delete all these styles that are just for this flashy intro page that they created, save it, but keep the tailwind stuff because we will need that. Next, go into index.tsx and I'm going to paste a very simple page that um, you can get in the blog article in the description. There is a link and all this is doing is giving us two buttons with handlers. And right now all those handlers do is say, ouch, when you click on them. So you can see that they're different. I gave them one and two and ouch one, ouch two, you can see it in the console. So that's all good. That works. Now let's make the appearance just a little bit better. We'll create a components folder and a layout.tsx file. There's another thing you can paste in from the article, but we're going to set it up so that all of the children go inside of this main element, which is flex column and item center. So when we incorporate that into app.tsx, you will see that take effect. So if we go into app.tsx, you can again paste from the article and we're just wrapping the component, which contains all of the page stuff in the layout component that we just created. So you can see that it's a little bit more nice looking with that. So that's our basic setup for this app. Let's uh, move on to adding the next auth package. In order to add the next auth package, we can kill this server that we've been running and run npm install next auth. As that's installing, we can go into API, create a new folder called auth, and in it create a file called dot 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 next auth. JS. Inside of that file, we can paste the following. This contains two providers, one for Apple, one for Google, with the corresponding environment variables. We'll get to those in one second. There's also this cookies area for PKCE code verifier, which is just some fancy thing that they're looking for. Um, so this prevents an error later on down the line. Finally, we have the session callback where you can inject custom values into the session. This could be querying your database for custom attributes about the user um, using the email address provided by the providers above, or you can just set a custom value such as a date. So that's what's going on there. Next, let's create a .env-sample file. This is how I like to communicate that, hey, these environment variables are needed for this application. Now we can cp.env sample to simply.env and echo.env into .gitignore. So we never want to commit our .env file to git because it contains actual secrets. Um, and that's a no-no for git. Once you commit that into git, it's going to be very painful to get it out. So just make sure you put it in gitignore. And we can work next on setting these values to something that makes sense. So here's where it gets fun. We go to console.cloud.google.com and we get a sign in. I'm going to create an account specifically for this video so that all of the prompts that you get when you're a new user, you will see them in this video. So give me one second to create this account and I'll be back. And there we go. We have a new account and here we are. Pagekeytestuser at gmail.com. Feel free to shoot me an email. I will not be checking this account, but 
you should be seeing something similar if this is the first time you've ever logged into Google Cloud. I'm just going to agree to the terms of service and continue. Next, we are going to press create project, new project, and we can give it whatever name. I'm going to call it page key auth example. You don't need to click any organization, just hit create. Now we'll go to APIs and services, credentials. We have to make sure we select our project that we just created at the top. Then we'll have the option to create credentials, OAuth client ID. We have to configure our consent screen. We can click external and hit create. Now for our app name, I'm just gonna say page key auth example yet again. Use my email for the support email. For the logo, I just select the page key solutions logo. And app domain, my homepage, pagekey.io, privacy policy, slash privacy, terms of service, slash TASF. Fair enough. We have to add pagekey.io as a domain, and I'll add pagekeytestuser at gmail.com as my developer contact info. I'll do save and continue. So we'll want to add or remove scopes and select userinfo.email and userinfo.profile. Update that, and we can press save and continue. Add your email to the test users for sure. So we'll do pagekeytestuser at gmail.com, add it. And we can save and continue, and we're good to go. We're gonna hit back to dashboard and go to credentials again. And this time we should be able to create credentials, OAuth client ID, select web application. And I'm gonna call it page key auth example web for authorized JavaScript origins, put localhost 3000 for testing purposes, as well as your actual address where you'll be hosting this app. For redirect URIs, it's gonna be very similar but you're going to add slash API slash auth slash callback slash Google. And then you're going to do the same thing for your main address where you're hosting this app. Then you can hit create and you get this information right here. Let's copy this client ID, copy the client ID, paste it in to the Google client ID area here. And we'll copy the client secret and put it in the Google client secret spot. These are also a good thing. Actually, I put my entire ENV file into a password manager. However you want to manage this, just don't put it in Git. That's not a good look. Either way, we have all the information that we need to test out our Google login. Very exciting. So let's test login with Google. What do we have to do? Well, if we go on back to index.tsx, let's set up this handler to actually sign in with Google. So we we, we literally just have to say sign in and give it Google. And it'll recommend that we use this import, sign in from next auth slash react. If we start our dev server again, this will get us started. However, how do we know if we're logged in? First of all, we want to use the session object from next auth react. So we can import that. We can also create a login element that changes based on whether or not you're logged in. So that'll start out looking like that. But if the session and session.user variables are all set up, then it will simply say, instead of showing the login buttons, it will say logged in as and provide the email. We'll keep the, uh, the handlers the same. But uh, down here, instead of returning all these buttons, we'll return the login element. Okay, so we're getting an error that we uh, need a session provider. How do we fix that? Well, if we go into app.tsx, if we wrap everything with the session provider, that is provided by next auth, then that should take care of the error. So let's see how that looks. And we're good, we're back. Um, our layout got a little messed up, but we are back. So we could add just a little bit of margin to these guys and it should clean things up. Okay, perfect. So let's click login with Google and see what happens. Here we go. Okay, moment of truth. Voila, it worked. Amazing. Okay, login with Google, done. Not that hard, right? Not that hard. One more thing that we should probably add is a log out button. We can just go ahead and add that in here. And all you have to do is call sign out. You can import that as well from next auth react. So this log out button's really ugly, but you click it, it works. So you go in and you log back out. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Let's move on to the real problem child. Let's move on to the one that makes it difficult. We all know that these guys are gonna make it tough, but let's log in with Apple. And uh, yeah, let's figure that out. Okay, so what we'll do is go to developer.apple.com, get all logged in and go to identify. And now here's where it's really tricky. In the top right, it says app IDs, click services IDs. It's like hidden. 
then we click the plus to generate a new one. We hit continue. For description, we can do page key auth example identifier io.pagekey.example.auth. Continue. We hit register, and there it is. Click the new ID that we just created and check enabled next to sign in with Apple, and then click configure. Here's where it gets interesting. We just put in our domain here, and then the return URL. This is very similar to the one that we did for Google. Instead of Google, it's Apple. And you can select your app ID that you should already have and hit done. You can hit continue and save. Now if you go down to keys, you can hit plus and call it page key auth example. We'll check sign in with Apple, hit configure, select your app ID and hit save. Press continue and then hit register. Save this key ID somewhere that you uh, know where it is. You'll need it soon. We'll just put it there for now and hit download and you get a P0 file. If we open that P0 file, we get this, a private key. So up here in the top right corner, you will see your team ID. Write that down as well. And with that, we are done with Apple Developer for now. We're going to run some scripts that will generate the credentials that we need. So this script is called AppleGenSecret.mjs. It's originally from Blazorban44. So the link's there. There's also a link in the post to where this is. Uh, I made a copy on the example project on GitHub. Yeah, all we have to do is copy this in and now we can run it. So we'll kill the server. We'll make it executable. And now we can export some variables. Apple key ID, take that from the other tab. Apple private key, we can paste that as well. Might want to put that in quotes as you paste it. And then Apple team ID. And this one I will hide real quick. We have one more. Export Apple client ID equals io.pagekey. This is the same domain that you used when you signed up. Finally, we can do dot slash script slash Apple Gen secret key ID, Apple key ID, ISS, Apple team ID, private key, Apple private key, client ID, Apple client ID. Oops, I need to do an underscore for the private key, not a dash. With the private key, you can actually just take the entire thing and do export apple private key equals start a quote, paste, paste multiple lines, close the quote. And then if you echo apple private key, you can see that it just did spaces, which is fine. Uh, when we run the script, it'll actually work. So if we run dot subscripts, Apple Gen Secret, key, key ID, team ID, pass all that in, hit enter. It says Apple Client Secret generated, valid until, and it's about six months. So copy that token. This is our client secret. We'll paste this in here. Actually, that can go directly into dot env. So the client ID, we already know because that was one of our variables earlier, and we can just paste in that Apple secret. Just keep in mind that you'll have to rerun this script in six months. So you might want to keep a a hold of these other variables as well. Definitely keep a hand on your private key. Don't lose that. Either way, that's all that we need to do to configure Apple. <laughs> Unfortunately, Apple does not allow you to test on localhost. They make everything difficult. So if you want to see this in action, go to boomlanguages.com. We can do that right now. If you hit login with Apple, it does indeed work. And I used this method. So you can trust me on that one. Thanks for watching. I hope it was useful. Be sure to subscribe if you're interested. Check out Boom Languages if you're interested. One more quick note, if you're really loving this stuff, you can sign up for the PageKey mailing list at pagekey.io slash sign up, and you will be the first to know about anything coming out of PageKey. Thanks a bunch.